Okay, I liked Agretzko Season 5. Much more than Season 4, at least. Although, it did continually shock me the route that Haidas continued to take. Some redemption was given to his character, but there's still a reflexive problem, I think. Agretzko, at least, starting in Season 2, has been a Tokyo Godfather-style plot structure where a large sequence of events Rube Goldberg machined themselves down an ever-expanding snowball until suddenly you are at a grand location. I really like this about Agretzko. Each episode takes small details and intertwines them in ways that one can appreciate. I think Season 3 did this the most cleanly, but we were clearly left in a weird spot with Season 4. Over the course of Agretzko's run, Retzko and Haida both seem to have undergone a sort of flanderization in opposite directions of themselves for their characters. Retzko was initially a relatable protagonist due to the unremarkability, the mundanity of a crushed dream, the death of a salesman, so to speak. A girl excited to enter the workforce and move up the ladder, being stuck for five years under a sexist boss who treats her like a coffee secretary instead of the hard-working accountant that she is, just because of what her gender is. Someone who, despite this crushing reality, was too weak-willed, unconfident, and ineffectual to stand up for herself and make a change for years. Instead, she bottled up her anger and let it out all by herself. She was a bag of rage with no confidence to share or shape the future, holding on to the only dream that hadn't been crushed, that of a fanciful romance that could sweep her off her feet and give her a better life. Haida, on the other side, was a confident, intelligent, hard worker who always spat relatable sardonic comedy speaking truth of bad situations with a certain biting humor, just enough to lighten the mood and to let you know that he understood without ever being a downer. He was a musician, a go-getter. In a lot of ways, he was flawed, but a promising, competent match for Retzko in the first season because he promised something outside of work, that he already had something going on. And that's wherein the obvious ship sailed. Haida's main weakness was in his timidness to commit to Retzko, his fear of disturbing the norm. She was his kryptonite in a way. Conventional storytelling then would imagine Retzko eventually reframing her fantasy idea of romanticism into the very real love and romance she could receive from someone who understood her. Not settling, but understanding, appreciating something new. Robin's better than the girl of my dreams. She's real. Instead, there's a sort of escalating trend to de-emphasize Retzko's relatable traits and overemphasize and reinvent Haida's negative ones. As season after season goes on, we see the writers develop more and more reasons why Haida just can't do it, why he keeps backing out, the ways that he gets really unreliable and pathetic, and it ends up reading more like a metatextual reason to write the character so that he won't end up progressing his character arc than it does a genuine character flaw until he's eventually looking like a completely different person. Meanwhile, at the same time, Retzko develops a seemingly magical ability to fix any situation as the series goes on, completely undercutting the fact that for five long years, nothing remarkable happened at all. Becoming instantly famous on YouTube and making tons of money, becoming a beloved cult classic idol, having a billionaire tech CEO at her whims, it seems like everyone becomes enraptured by Retzko until she is finally committing full spy heists in Season 4 and, without in-world explanation, Super Saiyan Energy Ball blasting people out of the sky. Without in-world explanation, she has transcended to a magical character that seemingly has everyone love her and everything go her way anytime she touches it, which seems to be opposite to the whole point of why she was initially written. The show has long past jumped the shark, but season five did intend to somewhat patch it up, at least by acknowledging it, which is a first major step. Being self-aware, directly calling out the seeming magic touch that Retzko has, and in the end, having her lose the electoral race, despite her best efforts. The only real flaw that remained of her was her lack of confrontation and willingness to let herself be pushed around. It's no wonder, then, as Retzko faced this protective writing power creep, that the show shifted more and more to expanding Haida in Season 4 and 5. Once again, they 
took a moderate personality trait of being a go-getter and turned him into a loyal lapdog willing to do anything to climb the corporate ladder. And from my comments on the Agretzko Season 4 video I made, as well, it seems that many people agree something went awry with his character in that season. It didn't seem like the Haida we knew. In Season 5, while they did clean up a ton of things, and I can say I genuinely came to like Haida again, those first few episodes were painful. Something they just drop on us in a previous season mid Agretzko is Haida mooching off of his family's money the whole time. This slashes through the independent and confident characterization he had up until then. But then, having him treat his one relationship so poorly, and then show him spending over 300,000 yen on gotcha while mooching off his parents' money, it completely wiped this impression, and for what? The initial idea of Haida, why did it need to be deconstructed in such a way? I want these characters to be the best they can be. To grow and change and overcome their flaws. To struggle, to change, I do, but a lot of the time it feels like the writing twists their characterization to fit them into entertaining set pieces, rather than the other way around. Once Haida got involved with his family this season, it was genuinely really engaging to me. I rooted for him, but it didn't go far enough. He jokes about the band having been offensive, but insists that Retsuko not search it up. He makes perfectly correct declarations about the Japanese economic bubble and the older citizens leaving generations of young people out to dry, the divide between Japan's old and new, and the discouragement and disaffectedness faced by suffering generations who feel unheard. Three decades, all the way to the 90s, Japan's lost generation, genuine political tact, but then he exemplifies the very stereotype his dad is railing against. His dad and all of the old Japanese mindsets. It's almost as if they gave the representative of the message that could genuinely be something good a meta-narrative reason that leads you to emphasize but ultimately dismiss his points. It never dives into his head deep enough, fleshes out full issues, and overall, I think, doesn't go far enough. It lands flat. Retsuko and Haida's characters and developing relationship took a back seat, so when it finally happened, it barely felt like anything changed. They live together, but they never kiss. And after four seasons, they get a short montage of them being happy before the whole season puts their trust against each other. And in season five, it does the same thing, with over-exemplifying terrible things that Haida does to irritate Retsuko only seconds after the show dares to actually show them happy for once. It seems to almost take glee in showing their bad sides, and no happiness in the characters finding themselves naturally. I get that this is meant to be a relatable comedy for those with slobbish partners living with them, but is this normie millennial relatable humor that I'll admit was always somewhat a part of the show, worth the quality of the character arcs and writing? Is it worth sacrificing the things that make the characters likable and compelling? I don't know, man. I actually did like Agretzko season five, and it was a huge improvement from season four. And because of season four, I almost didn't watch it. But while I do now have renewed hope from season five in the future of the show, there needs to be some effort of regrounding the characters in reality, having them touch back with their roots. Otherwise, it might not be able to ever get its focus back. At least season five was self-aware with what season four did, with Washimi making a joke, let's go for Congress, what's next? Let's go for astronaut? Because unironically, that is the way that the show feels like it's going. In a way, her running for office is almost more comedically over the top. But it at least felt self-aware this time, which it didn't in season four. The side characters are also shown without Retsuko in scene commenting on her seemingly miraculous ability to challenge and change things successfully just with her presence. Just the existence of that within the narrative gives a lot more believability to the story, rather than just leaving Retsuko as a fantasy fulfillment character, something she absolutely didn't start as, but is dangerously trended towards. I don't know, I still mostly had fun. I would still say I like the show and it's worth watching overall. Retsuko and Haida so far haven't really worked, and that's really exemplified in the way that their characters has changed. 
In one, an iron to flatten the flaws, and in the other, a fall from grace. I guess I'm still invested, though. Thanks for watching my video! Whoa, are you surprised? Uh, you didn't see the last video, I actually already explained that I'm gonna start doing this at the end of the videos to be more personable and kind of, you know, uh, see how I'm looking. Specifically because I've lost over 40 pounds since November, aka the last time I really showed myself on camera, and I'm happy with how I look, and I want to share that, and share my journey over the time. I also am, of course, curious, as always, to know what you thought of Agretzko Season 5. Did you like it more than Season 4? Did you like it less than Season 4? If you did, why? Why did you like it less than Season 4? I, I don't know why anybody would. Whatever your opinion may be, let me know down in the comments below, and as is pretty self-evident from all of the videos that I already make and put out for my entire history, I still respond to tons of comments. Also, I do everything on YouTube myself. Literally everything from the ground up. And because of that, it takes a crap load of time to do this. I also do it for my job. So I would really appreciate if you could financially support me if you're at all comfortable or in a position to do so. Um, like a few people already do on Patreon and Twitch. Namely, Daniel Frousing, Zioma, Benny, Young Suk Chong, Rob Paulson, and of course, everyone else that you see on the screen right now. Also, weird thing, I'm going to Poland, and I'd really appreciate your support, both financially and just through liking, commenting, sharing the videos around. I am also open to meeting with a number of people in Europe who are, you know, fans of the channel or want to get a picture or anything like that. So let me know if you're going to be there. Contact me on Twitter, anything like that. Maybe we can set something up. Thank you very much once again. I'm trying my hardest to put videos out so I can get enough AdSense to actually have the money for this trip. So thank you again for watching. All the way to the end, too. I, I'm, you're in the minority. Anyways. I'll see you soon.